What's up guys, Jay here and welcome back to our Deep Rock Galactic Mission Guide series. If you're new to this series, here we go over the basic premise of each of the various mission types and talk about what to expect in them, as well as what the classes can provide in terms of completing them. In today's video, we're going to go over the Salvage Operation Mission Type. We're going to cover the basics of what the process of completing a salvage operation is like, the finer details that come with it, and some recommendations and guidelines on how to play each class in this particular mission. Lastly, we'll talk about the overall difficulty of salvage operation missions and how it compares to the other types in the game. So if you guys are ready, let's talk about the mission type that commonly gets overlooked, the salvage operation. By the way, if you want to see more gaming videos, subscribe to the channel, that way it's easier to find my content. This is a salvage mission. A previous crew lost their mini mules, their drop pod, and their lives in this cave. So you're going through a salvage operation mission in Deep Rock Galactic. Well, these missions are very interesting and unique, and they have several steps that need to be completed. The main goal of a salvage operation is to repair and recover the equipment of a failed mining team that was lost before they could be extracted. Don't worry about what happened to them, though. I'm sure they just had an accident, and there is definitely not something big and dangerous down here that got them. In order to complete this main objective, you need to complete several smaller steps first. You need to find and repair several mini mules, establish an uplink between the lost drop pod and the space rig, refuel the drop pod with fresh fuel cells, and survive while the drop pod powers up. These missions can seem complicated since they have a lot of different steps that need to be completed, however you actually have several points where you can catch your breath before going into the next step. Well done, the mule is working again. Salvage operations are definitely one of the more interesting mission types in the game. While they are not necessarily the most difficult mission type, they definitely have a decent amount of complexity. So to help you get through these missions, let's break them down as best we can. First, like every mission type, it's good to know just what kinds of details you need to account for. As usual, there are parameters that are determined by the mission length and cave complexity. In the case of salvage operation missions, these determine the number of mini mules you will need to repair, which could be two or three. The next thing to keep in mind, as always, is the kind of layout that the cave system has on these missions. Salvage operations take place in a linear cave system, with one small starting room branching into a large cavern containing the mission objectives. There are short tunnels that branch out from this main cavern, which always loop back around to it. Once you find out where you need to go, the first objective is to locate and repair the broken down mini mule units, which are scattered around the cave. You can easily find the mini mules as they emit a constant beeping noise and have a green aura around them. Each mini mule is missing three legs, which are typically scattered around near them. Scanning the mini mule will allow the legs to emit a glow and to be seen on the terrain map as a large purple icon. When you find them, they need to be dug out of the ground, carried over to the broken mule, and attached. One thing to note is that when walking within two meters of a mini mule for the first time will trigger a large wave of enemies to spawn. Another smaller wave of enemies will spawn when one of the legs found near each mini mule is dug out. Once all three legs have been attached, the mini mule must be repaired. Interestingly enough, repairing a mule will reward the team with gold and nitra. At least the team that died down here had the decency to leave resources for you. After all the mini mules have been repaired, a button will appear on the back of the main mule, Molly. Once pressed, the mini mules and Molly will dock at the broken drop pod, allowing for the next step of the mission to begin. After all of the mules have been sent to the drop pod, the team must then repair an orbital relay uplink to continue the mission. Once it's repaired, the team must defend themselves against waves of enemies and stay within the radius of the uplink while mission control triangulates your position. Progress bar will progress more quickly if more players remain within the the triangulation zone, and will rapidly decrease if no players are within the radius. Players who are downed within the zone will not advance the progress bar. If the progress bar is completely drained, the mission will fail, so make sure that your entire team is working together to stay in the zone until it's completed. After this process is complete, fuel cells will be dropped nearby so you can fuel the drop pod to escape, because I'm sure that this abandoned and rusty drop pod will definitely be able to take us back to the space rig. The fuel cells must be connected to the drop pod, and after it has been connected, the players can then build the fuel cells to begin the refueling process. The fueling process works identical to the triangulation process, so just stay by the fuel cells until the bar is completed. Finally, once the drop pod has been fully fueled, it will slowly power up until the team can leave, during which the players will have to hold out until it's time to go. Once the drop pod has been fully powered up, its doors will open, allowing the players to board and head home. Fuel cells fully charged. Drop pod engine powering up. So now that you know what you're going to be doing in salvage operations, let's talk about how you can achieve that goal using each of the classes, as well as if any specific class has an incredibly useful position in regards to utility. These missions have several different steps that each class can help with, so everyone has a good amount of utility that they can provide. If I had to pick one class that does more than others, I would say that the engineer has a little bit more utility than others since there's a lot of points where you need to defend. But with that in mind, let's go through each class and talk about the kind of utility they provide, as 
as well as if they do anything special for these missions. The driller has a good amount of utility, however since these missions are in a central area that don't require a lot of traversal, he doesn't get to use his drills nearly as much as he can in other mission types. However, you can still use them to carve out good footholds while defending the relay or fuel cells, and you can use them to cut pathways to the mule legs if they are in inconvenient spots. In terms of weapons, you can really use whatever you want, but I like using the sludge pump and pistol to help with area coverage, but feel free to experiment with whatever suits you. The gunner can provide good protection and area coverage on these missions. Since there are a lot of instances where you need to defend, the gunner's high damage output can be a great help at keeping the team alive. His shield can be crucial during the fueling and triangulation stages, and his ordnance can be good at softening up the enemies. Lastly, his zip lines can be used to help get to those hard to reach mules or mule legs. For weapons, anything can really work, but the minigun can work wonders at cutting through the enemies, and the coil gun can get lucky collaterals if you can line up your shots right. The scout has some useful assistance that he can provide during this mission. First, with the help of his grappling hook, he can very easily find and get to the scattered mini mule legs and quickly get them back to the mule. Also, as always, he can use his flares to illuminate the area and get a good view of what's happening or find any hidden mules. Lastly, his strong crowd control ordinance can help during the defending sequence. In terms of weapons, the assault rifle and crossbow make a good combo for me since the crossbow itself can be equipped in many different ways of utility and the assault rifle is just good all around. Finally, the engineer, like I said before, has probably the most use in this particular mission type. Since there are so many points where you need to defend, his ability to keep an area locked down and under control are in full swing. His sentries are able to cover a wide area during any of the defensive sections. His lures, proximity mines, and shredder swarms can also to help keep the swarms under control. The smart rifle and grenade launcher are a good choice for denial and wide area coverage. And as always, you can use his platform gun to help setting up at defensive positions or shooting perches for whoever needs them. Now that we've covered each of the classes individually, let's go over a basic setup. The gunner and engineer should prioritize defending the location and controlling the flow of enemies. Meanwhile, the scout can zip around and find the mule legs as well as any resources that the team needs. Lastly, the driller can be a floater and assist in whatever situation is needed of him, whether that be defending or leg gathering, as well as terraforming the land to make it as easily defendable as possible. Remember that these roles are not set in stone, and if you feel the situation calls for it, you can always adapt. Trump on powered up and ready to leave. It's time to bring it all home. Now that we've covered the basics of the salvage operation mission and talked about how the classes function in it, let's talk about where the salvage operation stands when compared to the other mission types. Remember that each mission type gets three different ratings, one for difficulty, one for how fun it is, and one for its complexity, each with a value of one to five, with one being low and five being high. Remember again that these ratings are just my personal take on this, so if you think it should be higher or lower, that's perfectly fine, and if it is, let me know down in the comments. First, in terms of difficulty, I'm going to give it a 3. This mission type may seem difficult on the surface with it having many steps, but it really is not that hard so long as you take your time and stick together with your team. The only really hard part, in my opinion, is finding the legs in the first place, because sometimes the game just hides them for no reason. Next, in terms of complexity, it's also going to get a 3 because though the steps are simple to grasp, there are still several steps in these missions. Between finding the legs, using the relay, and refueling the pod, there are a lot of things that you need to do before completing the mission. Finally, for the enjoyment rating, I'm actually going to give it a 4 because I actually find these missions interesting to go through. The concept of recovering a lost drop pod and seeing that there are other teams that go through these caves are always a really cool thing for me to think about. It would be interesting to see them expand on this in some way, shape, or form in a future season. Well, that essentially covers everything you need to know to get started going through salvage operation missions in Deep Rock Galactic, and hopefully now you have a better understanding of what goes into them. So what do you guys think? Did I miss any details? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next Friday for another video.